of all the spaces in our small house, the one that has changed most radically by our remodel is our dining area, created by combining one end of the sunroom and the old workroom, a large garden closet accessed from the deck. This video examines the spaces exposed when walls came out and how I dealt with them to create a spacious feel. In the before and after tour of our house that I will link in the description below, we showed how removing a wall and cutting a doorway under the stairs gave us access to the back of the house and solve problems with the layout. We then had a space with different floor levels and ceiling heights. But by approaching the design with a little creativity, we used all the spaces and light available to optimize the function and visual appeal of the new area. Whenever I design a space, I always rely heavily on inspiration from those who have already created well-designed spaces. So where did my ideas for this space come from? Believe it or not, several were inspired by the work of Frank Lloyd Wright. As I grew up, I heard the name and was curious about this famous architect, so I looked at photographs and books and did some reading, but nothing prepared me for physically being in one of Wright's designs. The Pope Leahy House here in Northern Virginia is one of his simple Usonian style houses that's even furnished with his original furniture designs that were flexible, functional, and inexpensive. But really, plywood? Despite the plywood furniture, it's a fabulous small house, only 1,200 square feet. The spaces work together and it's so functional. Frank Lloyd Wright buildings can be found throughout the country. Totally unpaid, shameless promotion. Go visit one if you have a chance. And watch the Ken Burns series on PBS, but I will tell you, nothing can compare with actually being in one of his spaces. In case you're wondering what Usonian means, the word was coined in the late 19th century to distinguish U.S. citizens from other citizens on the American continent like Canada and Mexico. U.S. Usonians, get it? Never really caught on with anyone but Frank Lloyd Wright as far as I can tell, but he used the word to name his small affordable houses that he pictured dotting the whole country. By the early 1960s, his revolutionary home designs had heavily influenced what we all recognize as houses built in the middle of the century. Not all the imitations were done with good effect, but his influence is now standard, even in floor plans of traditional homes. Most Americans unknowingly live in homes heavily influenced by Wright's Usonian designs. Previously, the living room or the parlor was separate from the dining room. Outside of one and two room cabins that did not require an architect, he was the first to combine the two spaces and have a kitchen nearby. That was the origin of what we now know as a great room or open floor plan. But that has been through so many iterations, it's not all I'm talking about. These concepts I'm going to share now are taken directly from the website for the Pope Leahy House. First, the house unfolds from front to back using compression and release. This Usonian house is entered through a cocoonish entry that descends steps while the cantilevered roof soars out over the lower space, opening downward. Our ceiling opens as you enter the middle of the house, opening upward. The Zimmerman house in New Hampshire is more like ours with the ceiling opening up. This 
opening up effect makes a small house feel larger. People are always stunned when I tell them our main floor is only 1,200 square feet. Wright also used lower ceilings to create a sense of enclosure. We have that same effect in the sitting space at the back of the room. I think the British might call it a snug. Next, his designs have minimal street-facing windows, but large banks of windows on the sides and back of the house, blending indoor and outdoor spaces, incorporating lots of natural light coming from different directions. This dining area next to a bank of windows opens to the outside, as does mine. He adored unobstructed views of nature and, I quote, abhorred blinds because they block the view. Except for bathrooms, I have not used window coverings for 30 years. Our Colorado home had the luxury of a private mountain setting. And this house has rare privacy considering we live in the city. The hillside location and the dense garden are far better than window coverings, in my opinion. We use small, unobtrusive honeycomb blinds to block sun and keep the house cooler. He also left exposed structural brick walls. Maybe I'm delusional, but I imagine if my home were stripped completely bare of all decor and furniture, Frank Lloyd Wright would appreciate my design. He hated everything Victorian, so he would have had a problem with my furniture and decor pieces. Sorry, Frank. Another device that makes a room feel generous is to leave open spaces in the room. There are two of those open spaces adjacent to our dining table. One by the door and another by the kitchen. In addition to making the space feel larger, they also give us a place to set up additional tables, which is important when all 18 members of the family come for holidays. If you know me, you know my style is all about antiques and family pieces. The family piece in this space that is most precious to me is the peach picture. The peaches were painted by my great-grandmother's older sister, Aunt Kate. And the lettering on the August 14, 1900 Dallas Morning News was done by Uncle Billy, their brother. Family lore has it that the picture hung in the foyer of the newspaper during an important milestone year, maybe the 50th anniversary in 1935. I should have paid more attention. This little table was passed around the family with no one interested in the broken drop leaf table with late 1960s antique gold paint. In the months the house was being remodeled, I took on several projects, including a repair and paint job inspired by Mackenzie Childs. Let me know if you would like to see more of how I use that whimsical style in my home. Unlike my living room that's filled with hand-me-downs, I slowly purchased most of the furniture in this space from second-hand stores over the years. The passage of time has helped them to qualify for the status of antiques if you use the, the 100 years old criteria. Nothing here is rare, costly, or difficult to find. We use an antique church pew for additional seating, especially handy when the nine grandchildren are in town. I think this was a washstand with a marble top, but I use it as a sideboard. My sister-in-law bought it in the 1980s when Victorian furniture was 
completely out of favor and then passed it along when she no longer had a use for it. Hint, for the best prices, buy things that are not trending, but that you like. I created a vignette using brass sconces and candle holders, family silver, and thrift store finds. I also love my bird collection. This is my great Aunt Maudie, who claimed those birds, live birds, that the photographer brought with him had bitten her. Seventy years later, she was still indignant. The photograph was the inspiration for my other birds. Two were gifts from our dear family friends, the Burgers. All great burger pieces begin with a variation on, look at this beautiful thing I found on the ground. This Egyptian owl was from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I love museum gift stores. You can justify the price because the museum benefits. It's a donation. This carving was from Oberammergau, Germany. And the primitive little clay bird, I think was made by my sister when she was in brownies. These two signed and numbered prints were found at Goodwill. And the colorful birds were from Marshalls. The armoire is currently being used to store overflow china, crystal, and silver. For my family, setting the table has always been an important part of the meal. My mother told the story of coming to the table for dinner when she was a little girl. When she saw the silver goblets on the table, she asked, is company coming for dinner? Her mother replied, no dear, they're the only ones we have that match. Even if we don't have company, we still deserve a beautiful table. My antique dining table and chairs absolutely fell to pieces. I could not handle gluing it back together again, knowing it was a never ending battle. So I did something rare for me. I purchased an extremely functional, sturdy dining table with a butterfly leaf at Costco. It's a relief not to have to caution people every time they approach the table. I would love to recover the seats in something with personality and I'm waiting for the perfect fabric to present itself. The table frequently becomes a catch-all if I'm not careful. I find it helps to have nice seasonal decor in the center. That inspires a pretty table setting. A beautiful table makes a simple meal more festive and communicates how much you appreciate the people you're dining with. The most creative solutions and the best stories begin with the biggest challenges. See you next time.